All of the presidential candidates this cycle are relying heavily on social media and the Internet to reach out to voters. If you don't believe me, just check out Donald Trump's Instagram feed. It's hard to imagine a time when online presence wasn't a basic and fundamental part of every campaign for every office at every level of the ballot. But the first person who really, truly harnessed the power of the Internet and its potential to reach out to younger voters was my next guest. Former Governor Howard Dean took a big chance when he built his long shot 2004 presidential campaign on the Internet. But he ended up transforming American politics in the process. And today we are kicking off a week long series here on MSNBC, The Seven Days of Genius. This is a series of conversations with thought leaders focused on the transformative power of genius to change the world for the better. And former Vermont Governor Howard Dean joins me now. Uh, Governor Dean, I'm sure you love being the first guest in our segment about genius. Uh, l- let me um, let me ask you to go back, though, to your 2004 campaign, really to the, the summer of 2003, because I can remember this well. And I, I think it's one of these things now we take the Internet for granted. But what your campaign was doing in the summer of 2003 with meetups, with organizing, with connecting people online, took you from entering that race in absolute obscurity to being the national front runner in the course of a few months. Tell us what was involved in that. Well, I, the only genius I have is trusting a whole lot of 23-year-olds who worked for us. Um, you, know, I, I, you know, I still don't know that much about the Internet. I'm not that good at it. But the, what we did was he had a huge influx of 23-year-olds and 20-year-olds into the campaign because of the position I took on the Iraq war, and they built all this stuff. There was no Twitter, there was no Instagram, there was no Facebook. Uh, they just built this from basically from emails, and it was an extraordinary achievement. But uh, the only credit that I get is, is inspiring a bunch of people to come to work for us for free who built all this themselves. It was incredible. But there, there, there's also a real legacy to it, too, because I think obviously your campaign didn't quite work out in 2004, but a lot of people say that, that what you showed was possible in 2004 in terms of online organizing created a model that Barack Obama and his team perfected four years later. That's true, but I think Obama's people should get credit for what we didn't have, which was an incredible discipline. Uh, The Internet is great, and it's a great outreach tool, but it's not a substitute for personal contact. And I think what the Obama folks did was to understand that the Internet was an organizing tool, but it was not a substitute for personal contact, and they did revolutionize politics. So we sort of showed the way, I suppose, and I think and ma- many of the young people that, that organized my campaign, Joe Rosebars, uh, Nick O'Malley, people like Mealy, people like that, ended up working for Obama. Uh, and so it's not a coincidence, but I do think that the Obama campaign had something else that we did not have, which was discipline. They also honestly had a better candidate. You know, I was pretty free form, and I, I, unfortunately, you can't really get away with that when you're running for president. <laughs> I'm curious, too, where you think this is all going, because one of the most uh, surprising things to me about the 2016 campaign has been well, we thought television advertising, who had the most money for television advertising, whose super PAC had the most money for television advertising, would be sort of determinative in, in this race. And yet you look at it, and Donald Trump, the front runner, hasn't really spent much on television advertising. Neither, by the way, has Ted Cruz, who's in second place here. Are we entering a phase where the Internet is basically just supplanting traditional television advertising as the way you get voters uh, connected to a campaign? There's a simple one word answer for that. and The answer is yes. Uh, You know, most kids, most people in this country are not going to be watching television in another 15 years. Uh, We just bought a new TV uh, last year. And we had to get the kind that you can hook up to a computer because that's what everybody's going to be doing. And they already are doing that. I mean, I uh, we watched the uh, the debate last night on a computer. Um, So this is I mean, the technology is moving so very, very fast. Television advertising is still important because people don't really believe you're a real candidate unless you can uh, be on television. But for the most part, that is not where the dollars should be spent. It is still where the dollars are spent because the consultants make so much money out of tele- television advertising, but it's not a smart investment. You have to do some, but you shouldn't make that dominate your campaign. It's a, a cautionary a tale maybe for all those candidates right now who are betting heavily on big bucks on the Florida airwaves over the next few weeks. We'll see how that turns out for them. Howard Dean, thanks for the time today. We appreciate it. Thanks, Steve. All right. And all week long, MSNBC is going to be talking genius together with the 92nd Street Y. We want you we want to know who you think 
is the ultimate genius. You can choose your pick from 32 people in categories including politics and innovation. And check out msnbc.com slash genius to cast your vote. Hey YouTube fans, I'm Luke Russert. Thanks for checking out our MSNBC channel. Subscribe by clicking right here and click any of the videos over here to watch the latest breaking news, mini documentaries, conversations from Shift, and other digital exclusives. Check it out.